Matt Hamilton, previously a top-tier executive at Ripple, made waves with an announcement on May 3, 2023. He unveiled Ripple's efforts in creating a specialized XRP ledger tailored for central bank digital currencies. Hamilton shared insights about crypto businesses now engaging in refining a private variant of the XRP ledger for state-backed digital currencies. As the erstwhile head of developer relations at Ripple, his words held weight. But questions arose. Did the value of XRP on this covert ledger match the public perceptions, or was it something entirely different? Black Swan Capitalists, a noted venture investor, claimed to have viewed this private ledger. They even posted images depicting XRP's staggering price at $327,000 on this elusive platform, sparking a whirlwind of rumors. As always, welcome back to Moneyside, your go-to spot for everything XRP related. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for up-to-the-minute updates on all our XRP discussions. Enjoying my content? Show some love by hitting that thumbs up and share your views down in the comments. This revelation prompted a firestorm of discussions about the actual price of XRP on this private version and even the ledger's very existence. But here's where the plot thickens. We recently stumbled upon a podcast segment referencing the Republic of Palau. Why does this matter? It's key to note the previously established partnership between Ripple and the Republic of Palau, especially when the duo spearheaded the world's inaugural stablecoin trial based on the XRP ledger. These stakeholders should, theoretically, be clued into the XRP price on this mysterious ledger and the finer details about its existence. In today's episode, we unravel this mystery. Prepare to witness a clip featuring none other than the Republic of Palau's finance minister. And brace yourselves, for he dives deep into the debate of public versus private ledgers, the foundation for their stablecoin, and XRP's prospective value down the line. Let's dive right into the clip. We opted for the public XRP ledger, primarily for its transparency. Communicating our milestones and ongoing projects transparently has always been paramount. So far, the journey has been rewarding, though not without challenges. It's pioneering work, a trial, an experiment, Throughout, Ripple's support has been instrumental in navigating these hurdles. As the clip concludes, it's evident. The Republic of Palau's finance ministry clearly prioritized the public ledger for its openness. However, their statement neither confirms nor denies the existence of a private ledger, leaving the door ajar for its potential reality. Many are curious about the XRP value on this rumored private ledger. We've sourced an audio snippet from another podcast, which we'll play shortly. This will shed light on the speculative price of XRP on this clandestine platform. A popular theory floating around suggests the possible convergence of the public and private ledgers. If true, this could amalgamate their prices arriving at an average. But this remains speculative without solid proof. David Short, better known to many as Ripple's CTO, was present during these discussions. Let's delve into the anticipated price on the XRP private ledger. While it's not set in stone, it provides a glimpse into the potential valuation the private ledger might attribute to XRP. I've said it before, and I'll stress it again, because of its sheer complexity, there is a private ledger. It's not just something plucked out of thin air. I've witnessed this myself on a YouTube video that was streamed live from Japan. And from that five minute clip, there's the existence of a public ledger as well. Now the real challenge, how do they distinguish between notes on the XRP private and public ledgers? The intricacy of this task cannot be overstated. Let's not lose sight of my primary point amidst these details. I genuinely foresee a time where the boundaries blur, where the private and public ledgers meld into one. A convergence is on the horizon, but before we see that day, we need robust, clear regulations. This ensures there's no ambiguity when they eventually function in tandem. From what I gather, they're still in the trial phase with this private ledger. Now, adding a significant twist to this narrative is the Bank of Japan, also recognized as SBI. They recently declared their intention to venture into XRP lending. This is no small matter. It unequivocally signals that XRP has caught the keen interest of major financial players. The launch of this new New lending service emphasizes the bank's vision of leveraging XRP for institutional transactions. And it begs the question, why would Japan delve into XRP lending if they didn't see a substantial role for the cryptocurrency in the future? The perspective I'm advancing becomes truly compelling when you consider the Bank of Japan's strategic move. Having conducted numerous tests and ascertained both individual and institutional appetites for XRP, they're now loaning it. It's not just a loaning exercise, it's a strategic banking maneuver to capitalize 
capitalize on the emerging cryptocurrency trend. The appeal of XRP isn't just its speculative value. It's a promising instrument for cross-border transactions on a massive scale for retail consumers and on the business-to-business -business front. We're witnessing a significant paradigm shift. Financial institutions aren't just holding XRP, they're integrating it into functional utility projects, leveraging its potential for seamless cross-border payments and intra-institutional transfers. This isn't a one-off trend isolated to Japan. Banking giants globally are aligning. Take, for example, the formalized partnership between Ripple and MasterCard. MasterCard isn't just a card company. It's a behemoth in payment processing with a vast network of subsidiary business Businesses. With this partnership, Ripple isn't just connecting with MasterCard's primary arm, but also its myriad subsidiaries like Fluency, Consensus, Yisac, Devereth, and numerous others not even mentioned here. Their collaboration doesn't merely signify an endorsement. It underscores liquidity and potential scale. There's significant chatter, not baseless, suggesting that MasterCard's collaboration with Ripple had a singular strategic objective, to employ Ripple as a primary payment conduit right from the outset. Let's be clear, what I'm sharing here is conjecture, speculation. I'm offering you all the bits and pieces, the information, news, and circulating buzz. I urge everyone to remember that my interpretation of why MasterCard might have partnered with XRP is just that, an interpretation, a hypothesis. Yes, they did collaborate with Ripple, and it's a known fact that RippleNet's architecture harnesses on-demand liquidity, primarily powered by the XRP cryptocurrency and its ledger. So by extension, if they leverage RippleNet, they're inherently tapping into XRP. That said, should MasterCard decide to facilitate payments via RippleNet, it would mean employing the XRP ledger by default. This insight, though speculative, underscores the gravity of such a partnership and its potential implications. Please remember, I am not a licensed financial advisor. The content presented in these videos is purely for entertainment purposes. I always encourage viewers to conduct their own research and consult with professionals before making any financial decisions. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications to be the first to know when I release new content. I'm excited to catch up with you in the upcoming video. Take care.